Uh, we are at, uh, at Harvard University in Emerson Hall on August uh, 6th, 5th, 1981, greeting His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who is here to address uh, a group of scholars and students on Buddhist philosophy. Your Holiness, thank you very much for being here with us. We are deeply honored here in America. And today I would like, to, I thought to give you an opportunity and we would also like to hear, in addition to the philosophical and religious subjects, you have been uh, completely overwhelming us with your profundity and eloquence. And today we would also like to hear something about Tibet, about something close to your heart, about your people, about the situation in Tibet. And I'd just like to open, the, open it to you to make any statement about Tibet that you want. I have a particular game I would like to play about it, sort of to imagine that I was some sort of a government official, perhaps the president or secretary of state or head of the United Nations or something, just imagining that such, such <laughs> persons were there to listen to you. And you could really tell what is deepest in your heart about Tibet and the Tibetan people and what the world should try to do about it. That's what I would like you to do, if you would be so kind. Hmm. Now you know, we Tibetan, with a long history, and quite, I think I should say, quite rich um, cultural heritage. So at the moment, uh, we passing through, how to say, um, great difficulties. But now, fortunately, since two, three years back, now things are changing in more, uh, how to say, a positive way. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I am quite hopeful. Mm -hmm. And of course, you see, we very much appreciate the them sympathy shown by the outside world, yes, including you see, many people from this country, yes, and if someone you see, who do not know about the Tibetan problem, about Tibet, yes, that is different, yes. But those people who re who actually you see some knowledge mm -hmm. about Tibet, then. The, you see, spontaneous you see, sympathy expression. I very much appreciate. Now I believe, you see, we Tibetan, those small country and um, small pop, um, I would say the only six million. Right. Yet we are human being. Yes. We have the right to be happy. So we are is carrying how to say the movement or the struggle. We are not um, anti some particular you see I mean, race or particular idea or ideology or system. Yes. Uh, um, in very nature of our struggle, you see nothing, no involvement, any ideology or racial problem. Like yes. That. So we just opposing the. Un, how to say, un, un, injustice. Yes. The work mm -hmm. uh, attitude. Yes. So this is the general, hmm, how to say, situation. Yes. And I would like you to say, hmm, if you ask the yes, sure. particular questions, then I will speak. Yes, and, and thank you, Your Holiness. My, what I wish to, uh, my approach is everyone says, you know, injustice, and they, everyone is quick to talk about such injustice. Mm. But when uh, you actually press anyone to actually do something to help, then always 
what Your Holiness has referred in past talks sometimes to secondary considerations always arise. Oh, well, it's a small place. Oh, well, there are so many other difficulties. Oh, well, what is the purpose and so forth. And people always lose sight of the human reality of Tibet because of all these secondary considerations and their sympathy becomes merely wishes without any action behind them. So to, I thought it would perhaps be inspiring for people to think positively and optimistically. Uh, as you said the other day, you're an optimist. You expect the best, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. So I would like you to, to express something about the best. In other words, for example, if Tibet was free tomorrow, if the Chinese occupation army was to decide to, uh, oh, let's go home, let's go back and uh, go fishing in the Yangtze. <laughs> and uh, they said, let's let his whole, let's go back to Tibet, let the Tibetans do what they want. What, what would you like to do? What would Tibet role, would, could Tibet as a free nation play in the world today? How could they, some say Switzerland of Asia and this sort of thing, what would your vision, your holiness own vision for your land be if you had your a, a power to <laughs> establish as you wished? I think it would inspire people to see a positive vision of Tibet as a happy country. You see, they've only known Tibet as closed to the world, land of magic and mystery, flying llamas and, and uh, yaks and buttered tea and so forth. <laughs> On the other hand, subsequent to your holiness having escaped from the dreadful invasion that came upon Tibet due to the world's uh, failure to really recognize its, its importance, they have only seen, as you have said yesterday the other day, the plight of Tibet has been a, a voiceless truth, a truth of human suffering without a voice. And so they have never had the idea of a modern Tibet and yet a free Tibet. So I'm asking your host to imagine, look, what would you do? Just today, say, here we're in Tibet now, what do you do? Tenzin Tedo, where shall we go? What shall we do? <laughs> what kind of schools should we have? What would we do? Mm -hmm. Would we invite the United Nations? What would your holiness do? Just for fun. <laughs> that is difficult to say. Anyway, I always believe it's a community of a, it's a people, a group of people. You see, uh, as a Tibet, in case of Tibet, as a mm -hmm. Buddhist nation, mm -hmm. though there are uh, a quite a number of you see, other believers, uh, like you see, uh, Christians, you see, I mean, t uh, Christians, Muslims, you see, Tibetan Christian, Tibetan Muslim, and also quite a number of Tibetan, uh, say, you see, original um, religion, we call Bambo, Bhanism. Yes. Yes. Bhanism. Mm -hmm. So, you see, majority are Buddhist. So, as a Buddhist nation, you see, we uh, so the basic belief is non-violence, yes. peace, yes. and uh, and also you see we Buddhists usually call other sentient being as a mother sentient being. Yes. You know you see yes. uh, mm -hmm. mother sentient being. Mm -hmm. So in that is a sense, uh, I say, there's no racial problem. Yes. You see everyone, as a whole, uh, I mean. I'd say, I mean, behave and motivation. Yes. I mean, something good, something nice. You see, they, we feel, I mean, I always believe, you see, the, what to say, all humankind are the same. Yes. Basically, all are the same human being. So, so you see, a group, I'd say, they, I mean, how um, to say, they respect for, for every nation, yes. for every, I'd say, mm, races. Yes. And and then also I think mm, I always you see express the all different you see, ideology, different religion, different faith. Yes. They mainly aiming for benefit of mankind. Mm -hmm. So you see, we not going to any. Um, as an argument or as a fighting yes. due to ideology or system or mm -hmm. faith. Yes. So uh, it really is a harmony and friendly. Mm -hmm. 
share per se a community yes. that is you see i think very important yes so at the moment you see we have the many problem in this world actually created by human mind mm -hmm. not due to natural disaster but yes. due to you see human mind certainly because of the differences of ideology differences yes. of uh, how to say the system differences of races yes and these are as you put it you see at the same time i always believe this is secondary yes so the most important thing is we must respect as a human being yes as a uh, you call brothers sisters or the mother sent being mm -hmm. so if we have this sort of attitude uh, and treat all sent being or all mother sent being as i am uh, right way i think we can we can solve many problem yes. without difficulties this is i always believe yes so tibet you could see tibet you promised to provide spiritual leadership in the community of nations as a free country tibet would provide the kind of leadership and example of neutrality and impartiality to everyone perhaps <laughs> it would be a good place for a un branch <laughs> in tibet except uh, this question although you um, i'm casually asking um, yes. questions uh, but some uh, say but we must think these are let's say uh, how to say the political nature yes so sometimes not much useful to talk really uh, they say too much political and uh, is a political certain certain political thing no no uh -uh. true but i i don't want to uh, in other words i I'm, i'm not trying to be political in order <laughs> in the sense of discussing the strategies uh -huh. how to get this mm. this mm. positive situation mm. but somehow it seems to me that in in striving for a positive situation people sometimes forget to imagine what it would be like mm. if such a situation mm. were to come to be so no mm. one can quite imagine mm. everyone so used to mm. everything being horrible mm. you know and something being wrong mm -hmm. that it's kind of uh, unusual to think of it being right and what would be gained from that so i am being making kind of unrealistic perhaps <laughs> imagination but it seems to me worthwhile uh, right and one thing is uh, since we see with the pet a very um, beautiful scenery yes the high mountains the high plateaus i probably mainly no? want to go to tibet mm. you know i promised my next so article mm, maybe a is a tourist center <laughs> that is very possible yes and then also you see we have very good water resources yes so in fact this is some uh, is one japanese company mm -hmm. called the mizu mizu mitsubishi no mitsubishi uh, i think you see that that company yes so in early in hmm, i think in early this century yes they already taking uh, interest about the water resources yes mm. so you see uh, and anyway uh, the no if we utilize fully yes resources water resources i think we can uh, we can give electricity supply right for uh, some people say you see if we fully utilize the water resource right. and we can supply electricity in you see large areas in eastern neighbor as well as in uh, southern neighbor says like that right so anyway you see these are worthwhile to how to say exp what to call explore 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 and also you see recent chinese how to say they what say what the the people uh, trying to find certain minerals what to call that uh mining exploring mining yes yes yes, yes mm. geologists oh yes geologist is uh, a according some chinese geologist is it they found uh, quite rich minerals yes around the hasa area yes as well as in some further northern area yes so, so you if you see these things are i mean there mm, it is mm, very important to use yes for benefit of mankind surely and as a plus since we believe how to say <clears throat> the mysterious is a forces or another other mystery phenomena yes 
so mystery beings. Mm -hmm. So before you see mining or how to say digging or these these certain things, right. we have to just consider these you see un unseen uh, uh, community. Uh, yes, unseen community. Yes. <laughs> so you see in perhaps you know in our you see tantric scriptures or in yes. certain scriptures, you see before doing. Uh, a certain digging or certain like that. Right. You see, certain prayer and certain right. meditations there. Mm -hmm. So, uh. that would be a very <laughs> exportable, you could export that skill very readily. I think everyone where one minds, they should have someone to enter to make a mandala for the sandha, <laughs> have a lama in front of the bulldozer and uh, make them less angry there. <laughs> So you would industrialize more seriously. You would you would want in Tibet to become industrialized. You would feel that would be of course. appropriate. Mm, yes, yes. And, and suddenly uh, implement is, technology. Oh, right. Since we, uh, how to say, in a certain area, mm -hmm. the climate is quite um, too cold mm -hmm. for cultivation. Yes. Now the only is the animals, um, and then. Uh, I say, I think you see, very important to make industries. Yes, yes. So you would but do that. How would you? One would, disadvantage, yeah. you see, we have no sea road. Uh -huh. Sea road. Yes. So, um, in the future, maybe train. Yes, train. Then the other, airplanes. you see, uh, other one only alternative is aeroplane. Right, right. So we need some, you see, really. I mean, big, big aeroplane, which can bring big missions. <laughs> right, sure. Well, they have huge ones. They can carry tanks. Nowadays, all the big airplanes, unfortunately, are mostly carrying tanks mm. and rockets, but mm. they can carry 20 tanks in some of them. So if you had peaceful machinery, there's no problem at all with Tibet today. I think, how, how would you relate this industrial development of a modernized and industrial mm. economy mm. Uh, to uh, the monastic uh, system mm. and to Buddhism, mm. how would you reform the Buddhist institutions that had been, uh, which Tibet is famous for as being the last uh, traditional stronghold yes, uh, of the monastic society? Right. Mm. We need many change. And I think in the, in the style of monks, you see, way of life, yes. or style, you see, mm -hmm. uh, I think many, many things we should learn from Christian uh -huh. practice. Mm -hmm. you see, the Christian you see, monks, they are, uh, it seems to me very realistic and very useful yes. in the sense, you see, in the social, social work. Yes. So you see, a monk, you see, Tibetan monk, and some portion or some you see, monk uh, can, uh, can work in the um, education field mm -hmm. and the health field. Mm -hmm. I think furthermore in is a light industry. Yes. I think monk uh, could participate. Mm -hmm. And another word, you see, uh, a monk at the same time a force, a productive force. Yes. That is necessary. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is some you see remain in, I would say, the uh, isolated place. Right. Like you see, saint, right. uh, saintly way of life, mm -hmm. and hold their energy spent on meditation and mm -hmm. vipassana like that. Right, so it's very good. Right, but you would therefore think of creating an order of worker worker monks, right? Like some of the mm -hmm. worker priests. Mm -hmm. in Actually, the you see, orders. in the ancient time, mm -hmm. you see, in each monastery, yes, the uh, quite number of monks, you see, uh, participate in even in construction huh. in monasteries, in construction or carpentry. And how to say the painting like uh -huh. this was uh -huh. many many monk carry. That's but you see, go in social in society. Yes. In the past, not uh, not much. You see. Yes. Uh, habit or something like that. Yes. Habit. So in future, we must use to participate. And you see our the Mahayana teachings principle. You see, you must mm, help uh, uh, help other yes. serve other not only um, from how to say from. From imagination, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you see, in actual, actual health, labor, you see, yes. really, I mean, yes. necessary. Yes, you have heard. And the country yeah. as a whole, mm -hmm. and a community of human being, I think, this should be, uh, should be done. Right. Hmm. Right. That's a very, very interesting picture. I can see a, uh, 
a Buddhist monk wearing, uh, because in a factory, I think, with a long robe with, mm. a, with a sen, mm. it might get caught in one of the machines. <laughs> so they would, you'd have to make a kind of suit like mm. Catholic wears mm. with mm. a collar or something, mm. red suit. Would you foresee such an innovation? Possible. Such a kind of thing? <laughs> and yet remain a monk and work, and work for the welfare of people in the world. I think your predecessor, the 13th Dalai Lama, he had this idea. Is, is that true? I have heard and read that at one point he tried yes, to institute um, such, a, um, such reforms. See, according to that, that, I mean, I mean, that period, yes. I think he uh, was, how to say, the, uh, how to say uh, he got some his modern idea, I think. Uh, how do you mean he? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you mean he? You mean hey, of course, <laughs> a separate, I mean, separate physical, at oh. least, you see. <laughs> in, in the so, 20th you see, oh. so, you see, time change, yeah. we cannot uh, remain as you see, the past bet. Yes. We should change. Like that? Yes, what about the educational system? Can Edu you think of... Um, how you would, you once asked me if, if I would uh, perhaps divide my time from translating Tibetan texts into <coughs> English mm. and perhaps try to translate some Western books on physics mm. and philosophy into mm. Tibetan. And I'm not a good enough bodhisattva to do that, unfortunately, just yet. But how, would you foresee translating into Tibetan and uh, a lot of Western knowledge and modifying and creating an educational system? Of course. Mm. It's very necessary. Highly essential. The general education system is, um, see, we in, in India also, you see, as a being refugee, we already uh, implementing the sort of see, combination, modern education as well as our own, let's see, uh, ancient tradition. Mm -hmm. That means, you see, the education which related to mental development yes. and education mainly related with external material development. Yes. So, mm, as a Buddhist viewpoint, it is necessary to combine these two. Yes. So the education system is something very, very important. Mm -hmm. So in the future Tibet, mm, I think, you see, the modern education with our own uh, traditional rich heritage yes. uh, go together. Yes, I, I, I was thinking when you were talking the other day with uh, President Bach, mm. and you mentioned about, you, the two of you agreed that it was necessary to train the heart mm. as well as the head, mm -hmm. that uh, the Tibetan education representing the ancient educational mm. system mm. Uh, in its refined form from these great pundits of ancient India uh, has something truly to contribute to um, Western or modern education with its concentration on brain, mm -hmm on brain only. And um, so you're developing, uh, you're having freedom to develop such a system in Tibet might be a great contribution to international education in some way. To find out how, for example, I mean, would or would you see, for example, young Tibetan in the course of uh, uh, universal education, uh, learning Madhyamaka and uh, Semzamba and uh, Prajnaparamita as well as physics, mm. I mean, but simultaneously, even younger, uh, without being monk perhaps. No, oh, of course. And yes. uh, mm. could, could you see a, a, a different system like that, which would be not like the usual ancient monastic system, but a, a yes, modern it, way of learning those subjects? Yes, we in India already, you see. Oh, you're doing oh, already? Like that. Mm. How have you, can you tell a little how, how you're trying to combine them? I think that would be very interesting. So in, the, in lesson, you see, mm -hmm. they learn a certain, these philosophical things. Oh included these things. So it seems useful. useful. Yes. So of course, you see, we need many, many, you see, further, how to say, uh, improvement. Right. You see, we, uh, through our own experience, we experiment certain things, we gain certain experience, then from that experience, we have to use a further, how to say, change or improvement like that. Right. So in any way, the education system is one of the most important, you right. see. Uh, if we want, if you want, see, good human being, mm -hmm. that means not only educate, education, mm -hmm. but the person, whether you call soul or self, itself mm -hmm. must be a good one. 
Right. Then the whole education or his knowledge, right. his or her knowledge, mm -hmm. will utilize in proper way. Mm -hmm. If they, is self, not uh, properly developed, then education sometimes used in wrong way, wrong yes. direction. Sure. And as a result, bring more, more, how to say, uh, more fear. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the I I had um, quite a number. Of, I, mean, I I had um, many chance or see opportunity to talk with some you see Indian, I would say the educationist. Mm -hmm. So many of them is agree the education system from the right from the beginning. Yes. We need you see some. I'd say some evolution. Or, I don't know. Right, right. Change. But you have yeah. a tremendous yeah. contribution. Sometimes colleagues of mine, mm. Professor Hopkins, some of mm. his students in the University of Virginia, in the graduate school, they learn uh, Lodic, mm. Tariq, these basic uh, books, uh, Dujah. Mm -hmm. And for some of us, uh, we're supposed to be well educated, already in, year, in school 15 mm. years. Mm. And you know, white color and black color is white and so forth. The color is, you know, these simple things. Mm. You as children in Tibet mm. learn these simple rules of thinking. Mm. Mm. This is big revelation to us. Oh, logic is like this. And we're supposed mm. to be educated. Mm. So if, if you're the young Tibetans already studying such a, such a very precise rules of thinking, you have a great internal science, it seems, to contribute to, to the world if you had more freedom in which to, to make this contribution known, it seems. Don't you think so? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, perhaps. <laughs> that, that brings to mind another thing. Some, I like the phrase, this Buddhist science. Mm -hmm. you know, you, there's an, they have such an expression, Christian science, kind mm -hmm. of, uh, we have here, mm -hmm. uh, so they know that's Christian science, kind of mind power, mm -hmm. power of spirit mm -hmm. over material. Mm -hmm. But then there has never yet quite been coined the use of expression Buddhist science or enlightenment science. But do you, do, how do you view that issue? In other words, whereas mm -hmm. uh, in Buddhism, do most people think of it just as a religion or kind of culture. Mm -hmm. But so I you think you see, yeah. uh, you see, there, mm, I mean, it's a certain point. I think many point. Uh, can learn for a is a non non believer even non believer yes you see I think some 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 idea mm -hmm. can learn from from Buddhist um, teaching yes a person remain as a I am mean, I mean, thinking only the, this life and worldly life right I think you see uh, from Buddhist teaching we can contribute some, uh, about the mainly I think the consciousness. Yes. About mind, about right. the brains, you see, function and the brains work. Yes. And relation between mind and physical, and through, you see, sometimes it's through, uh, through control physical and changing mind. Right. So the opposite way, through control mind, changing physical. Right. I think, you see, uh, some of my friends already experiment in this line. You see, they, they, they expressed you see, some satisfactory result. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, this is certain, this is mental problem and mental depression. Sure, mental, so see, many mental, sick oh, people, oh, crazy mental, people, see, mental sickness. Tremendous social cost. Uh, this is in the Western uh, countries. Millions and uh, billions of dollars spent. I think it's through uh, certain philosophy as well as th through certain techniques. Yes, you see, the breathing, breath, what call the breathing control or certain physical exercise, yoga practice. Yes. Uh, I think it is some, 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 let's say, contribution or oh, certain point. Perhaps you could have learn. a very thriving uh, psychiatric mm. institutes mm. in Tibet, sanatorium. So you can, you, people go. Mm. you may call Buddhist science, I think. Yes, mm. Buddhist science. So you saw. Yes. So I agree. So it's a wonderful, mm. you can, it, a picture emerges mm -hmm. of Tibet's contribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you initially said racially, mm. a kind of bridge between mm. the Chinese, mm. one billion, one third of humanity, and the Indian and the European type of Westerner, kind of bridge place in between. And then the science, a bridge place, but in the ideology, a bridge place between communist and capitalist, perhaps in a way, kind of bridge where they can mm. communicate in some way, some some, yes, some kind of compromises. Mm. I have 
uh, some serious I mean, thought about the dialogue between Buddhism and Marxism. Yes. So I feel, you see, in the in reality today, mm -hmm. from the uh, the breadth Siberia mm -hmm. up to Thai border. Yes. The modern, I think, one quarters of the I mean, human being. Yes. Mm, in this area. Right. The more than one third, I think. Huh? More than one third. One third. Hmm. It's about now you see. Uh, Originally, you see, the majority, mm -hmm. local, I mean, people, majority are Buddhist. Yes. And same time, country governed by communist state. Yes. And I had some chance, you see, mm, uh, seeing outer Mongolia as well as Buryat. Mm -hmm. And also I know, you see, through, how to say, you see, information, uh, through books or newspapers about right. see, Cambodia and Laos and Vietnam. Yes. And and Korea, mm -hmm. and of course, as I know, in China, about China. So you see, if hmm, we can do, if we can, I mean, we can, how to say, we can do something for the uh, good relations between yes. Marxism and Buddhism, I think hmm, it will uh, benefit for millions, millions of people. Yes. So you put it. Hmm. So I mean, you you mentioned it. So nice. <laughs> it is nice. We, we certainly hope that. Mm. Uh, as I said, we certainly hope that uh, mm. Tibet. I have to say myself that uh, we've known each other for some years. I used to always think. Remember, I used to joke sometimes that. Mm. So sort of, I agreed. Everyone just used to say Tibetan case is hopeless and a so small place and mm. so many billions of mm. people everywhere and all these military problems and who knows what else. And I was very discouraged myself, you know, and you, I remember you always held your truth, what you called the other day, voiceless truth. Mm. And the inner, I mean, you always spoke, but mm. it wasn't heard mm -hmm. widely. And uh, I would say you have convinced me uh, somehow, and it seems essential to the world to me, that, that Tibet is restored to a place of being a free beacon, like lighthouse, you know, like a turning uh, mm. light. Mm -hmm. for, for the world, for Asia. It's like kind of Switzerland place, a free space. <laughs> and for all these reasons that it bridges intellectually between the scientists, materialists, and the religious people, it can talk to both. They can't talk to each other, but, mm. but Tibetan Buddhism can talk to both. And the ideology is communist, capitalist, and racially the Chinese and the, and the, and the, and the, and the Indo-Aryan, the Indo-Europeans. It seems to be a kind of bridge between them. So we, we sincerely hope that um, you will invite us to a seminar in, in Tibet sometime, <laughs> soon, to a university there. Of course, certainly. Sometimes, you know, although not before we invite you here again. <laughs> I hope, I hope Thank we you. Will, you will Thank come you back much. again uh, here before that. Thank you.